Hey guys, my name is Sarah and you are watching Crafty Friday here on So Craftastic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a no-sew tie-dye t-shirt tote bag. That was a mouthful. Tulip asked me to be part of the tie-dye your summer campaign, which means I'm going to be posting a new tie-dye project here on Sew Craftastic every single Friday of May in 2016. So that means three more weeks of tie-dye, and I'll also throw other videos on my channel as well. So for those of you who want to see something else, there will still be other things. P.S. I like to stay active on social media, so use hashtag SoCraftastic on Instagram or Twitter to show me photos of things that you create and Crafty Amino as well. Also, please subscribe uh, by clicking that button below the video right there and click the like button if you enjoy this. Now, let's get into the tutorial. The intro was hopefully short and sweet. For supplies, I'm using a couple of Tulip one-step tie-dye kits, so I have lots of colors, and a plain white t-shirt. 100% cotton is best. Be sure to protect your work area with some sort of plastic, such as a big garbage bag like me, and then run the shirt under a bit of water until the fabric is damp. Wring out any excess and lay it flat on your covered surface. Bam! Bring in the rubber bands. You'll actually save yourself a little bit of time if you don't throw them on top of the shirt like I did, because this is a step in which you choose a tying method for your shirt. I decided to gather the shirt into five separate points so it resembles a star, and I went on to twist each individual point like so. And then after that was complete, I secured everything with these rubber bands here. I didn't want the middle to be left out, so I wrapped a few around that area as well. Don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, because in tie-dye you have the freedom to bunch, scrunch, and band the fabric in countless different ways. No matter how you do it, it's all going to turn out great in the end. Your tie-dye project is going to be 100% unique because no two projects ever turn out alike, even if you try. On to the dye! This particular brand is really easy to prepare because the powder is already in each bottle as you can see. All you have to do is add water up to the black fill line and shake it up until all the powder is dissolved. I probably could have put on a pair of gloves for this part just in case any dye dripped out, but luckily my skin remained clean. Right now is when you really, really want the gloves, unless you're going for a tie-dye finger look, which would be kind of cool, but it would take forever to come off. So I have gloved up, and here I've been taking one color of dye at a time, and I'm squeezing it onto a small section of the fabric. Again, you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. You can use any color or colors that you want. And if you want a bit more white to show up um, in your design, that's okay too. I want a lot of color though, so once I got finished with the top, I carefully moved the tied up shirt to another part of the bag, cleaned up the drips where it was, and then I flipped it over to the other side just so none of that dye would get on the colors I already had. So I chose to line up the color sections from the top with the bottom so they are a mirror image of each other. If your tie-dye piece has a bunch of tentacles like mine, wrap them individually with plastic wrap before putting the entire thing into a large Ziploc bag. I'm quickly going to show you the other two tie-dye designs I tried. For this one here, I simply twisted and rubber banded the entire damp shirt so it looks like a long loaf of bread or a snake. I left a little bit of white between each section of dye so the colors are able to blend nicely over the few hours that it has to sit. For this one, I'm taking a fork to help me form a swirl with all the fabric of the shirt. Then I crisscrossed three rubber bands and colored each triangular pie slice with a different color of dye. Don't forget to flip it and dye the bottom as well. This one I stuck directly in a bag without using plastic wrap because it wasn't necessary. 
Let them chill in the sealed bags for at least six to eight hours so the dye has time to soak in. And by chill, I just mean hang out on the counter or something, not in the fridge. Letting them sit for that long will allow them to get as bright and bold as possible. I actually let mine sit overnight, so they were in the bags for about 14 hours instead of the six to eight. Now I'm rinsing out the excess dye. Initially, I do this step while the rubber bands are still in place on the shirt, and once enough excess is rinsed away, I remove the bands. I just kind of take them off. You can cut them, but I am afraid that I'll accidentally cut the fabric, so I just pull them off, then keep rinsing until the water runs clear. As you can see, I kept my gloves on for this part just in case. For the next step, you'll need dry shirts, but you can wash them in the washing machine first if you wish, and you'll want to wash them separately. You don't want to wash them with your other clothes for the first few washes because the dye can come off for a while. But after I dried the shirts, I put them on the table here. Well, here's one anyway. And what I'm going to do is just cut off the collar and I'm also going to cut off the two sleeves. And I'm using fabric scissors, but you can use any kind of scissors that you want. And you can also cut down further around the collar to make the handles appear longer. And then what I'm doing is I'm flipping the shirt inside out and I'm taking my pair of fabric scissors and cutting off that bottom inch or so. Then I'm going to cut slits all the way across the bottom of the shirt. Mine are about one and a half inches long and it doesn't really matter how wide they are. You don't want them to be too skinny or else when you go on to the next step, which is pulling and tying them together, if it's too thin, then it could rip. So you definitely want your pieces to be wide enough and you're just going to tie along the entire bottom so it's all sealed and when you do this double or triple knot each pair of the shirt tassels and you can leave it this way if you want or what I like to do for a more finished look is turn the shirt back inside out and now you have a t-shirt tote. If you end up making your own t-shirt tie-dye tote or any type of t-shirt tote or just any project that uses Tulip one-step tie-dye, then go ahead and tag your creation with hashtag SoCraftastic or hashtag tie-dye your summer or you could do both. And you can share those photos on Instagram, Twitter, or Crafty Amino. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to find out more patterns, projects, and inspiration in general, then go ahead and check out tiedyersummer.com. I'll link it down below in the description box. And also, don't forget to check me out on social media like I mentioned quite a few times. But I like to post on Instagram and Twitter and Crafty Amino. And I have a Facebook fan page, so follow me. My username is Sarah Lynn T, and you can use hashtag SoCraftastic to share your creations. You can also use hashtag tie-dye your summer. Don't forget to subscribe and click like. And also check back next Friday for a new DIY from me, Sarah, here on SoCraftastic. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Guys, I'm having a major sewing machine struggle and I thought who better to ask than all of you guys watching because I'm sure there are some really great sewing people here. I just got this sewing machine back in maybe November or something. It was not that long ago and I've been sewing on machines for over 10 years. I know how to how to thread it. I know how to change the bobbin. The issue is when I turn this knob, I have some footage, the needle is not catching the bobbin and it just feels like it's stuck and it's just not doing anything. So if any of you know what the problem is, please let me know. I have used this sewing machine for a couple different projects. Hold on a second. Not sure if you guys saw my cozy room decor video, but I used that sewing machine to sew both of these things. Didn't have an issue at all. And now all of a sudden I wanted to sew this and not working. If you do have a working sewing machine, it would actually be quicker to sew the bottom of this and then it wouldn't have the little tiny holes at the bottom, but it's okay because 
probably nothing's gonna fall out of those unless you put bobby pins in and don't put them in a container. It's strong enough to carry some lighter things such as a beach towel, a bottle of sunscreen, a pair of sunglasses. These are just fake ones for a craft challenge I did a few months back. And then I just put Leo's cat toy in here just to show you that you can put stuff in here. But you don't want to put your school books or anything really heavy because the fabric can stretch and rip if you do that. 